Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So today we are going to discuss a very important topic that is translational pharmacology. So without taking much time, let's begin. Now we will be covering our topic under the following points of discussion. Let us take one heading at a time. Let us see what do we mean by the term translational pharmacology. The word translation, it means application. Now application of what? So the concept of translational pharmacology is that whenever there is application of the laboratory findings, whatever we have done into the lab, whatever new drugs we have discovered, when they are applied into the clinics for the purpose of patient care and our ultimate goal is achieving a better treatment outcome for the patient. This entire concept is known as translational pharmacology. Now the core concept of translational pharmacology is bench to bedside. Now the word bench means that is whatever we are doing into our labs. When that knowledge, our laboratory knowledge, our basic research knowledge it is ultimately applied into the bedside or the clinics of the patient. This entire flow is known as translational pharmacology. Remember students, this is a very important concept, bench to bedside. Now the translational pharmacology, it is a two stage process. In the first stage, the laboratory findings, they are ultimately applied into a clinic. And in the second stage, as we have already told that we ultimately we want to achieve a better treatment outcome. So the second stage focuses on whatever we have learned in the clinic. They are applied to the community. Translational pharmacology has got three major components. The first component as we have already told you, it is the basic laboratory research. Now this knowledge from the basic laboratory research, it will ultimately be transferred to the clinical practice and this clinical practice will ultimately help the population. So the research clinical practice and the population needs, these are the three components of a or rather these are the three components of translational pharmacology. Now there is another concept that is translational medicine. This translational medicine, it is the process when we turn the appropriate biological discoveries. That is whatever discoveries that we have done into the labs. When these discoveries are turned either into drugs or into medical devices for treating the patient. Right? So this lab, whatever we have done into the labs, when it is applied into the clinics. This is where the translation is taking place. Now, this concept of translational medicine, it closes the gap between what we know, right? What we know through our researches, what we know in the laboratories and what we ultimately practice. This gap is getting closed. Now, remember, it's a very important line that translational medicine closes the gap between what we know and what we practice. Now please understand that translational medicine, it is a bi-directional concept. Obviously, first concept is from bench to bedside in which whatever we have learnt into the laboratories uh, through our researches, the basic researches, they are ultimately put into clinical testing when we are moving from bench to the bedside. And the second concept is from bedside to the bench as well. Whatever we have applied into the clinical testing, we take feedback about it. So there is a bi-directional flow of information both from bench to bedside as well as from the bedside to bench. Now another concept that we have that is the translational research. Now translation, as I have already told you that the word translation stands for application. Now application of what? Application of the results that we have learned through our basic biomedical research and they are applied where? 
दे आर अल्टीमेटली अप्लाई टू दी प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिसिन दिस इज वेर दी ट्रांसलेशन इज टेकिंग प्लेस नाउ स्टूडेंट्स यू मे नोट दैट द वर्ड ट्रांसलेशनल फार्माकोलॉजी ट्रांसलेशनल मेडिसिन एज वेल एज ट्रांसलेशनल रिसर्च दे कैन बी यूज इंटरचेंजेबली सो फर्स्ट थिंग दैट इज वट इज हैपनिंग इज दैट something is getting discovered in the laboratory some new drugs or some new therapy they are getting discovered into the laboratory and then whatever we have discovered into the laboratory we are translating it we are applying it into our clinical interventions and once we have got proven clinical benefits then they can be ultimately applied to the benefit of the human health so our knowledge into the labs is getting translated into the clinics and that is where the concept of translational medicine or pharmacology or research is coming into being now this translation as i have already told you it is bidirectional it will occur from the bench to the bedside that is from the laboratory to the clinics as well as from the bedside to the bench through the form of feedbacks that how good our system is now if we look at the traditional drug discovery pathway the traditional drug discovery pathway first has a basic research and this basic research is identification of the heads identification of the lead compounds ultimately through those researches we come into the drug discovery and designing of the molecules now once we go into the designing of the molecules after that there is the preclinical development followed by the preclinical development there is the early and the late phase clinical trials after the phase 3 clinical trials the drug will ultimately successful completion of the phase 3 clinical trials the drug will go into the market now this part that is the basic research and the drug discovery this part is what is happening in the bench or the laboratory part and this part that is the early and the late clinical trial up and after that it is going it going into the market this is where the application part is taking place or this is what the bedside is happening but you may see between this bench and this bedside there is a gap and this gap the pre clinical development this is our first gap in translation or rather the first gap in application of whatever we have learned in our bench to the bedside and this gap is often also known as the valley of death so what does translational pharmacology or translational research aims to do it aims to apply this knowledge of basic research into clinical research that is from bench to the bedside and ultimately our goal is to improve the health of the patients so first translation is occurring from basic research to the human studies and the second translation is occurring of this new knowledge that we have learned now through the clinical research it is translated into the clinical practice now let us see what are the phases of a translational research a translational research will have four phases classically t1 t2 t3 and t4 in t1 it is first translated into humans these are healthy humans or the early clinical trials this knowledge from t1 will now move into phase t2 and it is then applied to the clinical settings that is we will have the patients here now from whatever we have learned from these clinical trials ultimately it will be put into practice and then once we get conclusive results of after putting it into practice ultimately this entire knowledge will be translated to the population and there will be a health benefit for all so these are the phases of a translation now if you go into a bit more detail 
on the phases of uh, translational research the first phase is phase t0 now in phase t0 it is the basic science research or whatever we have learned in the labs these are the preclinical and the animal studies and they are defining mechanism targets and the lead molecules so whatever we have now learnt into the lab we are now going to put it into our clinics or rather from the bench to the bedside in t1 or the first phase it the first translation or application will occur in the humans but but please remember this is healthy volunteers these are healthy volunteers this t1 is the proof of concept or a phase 1 clinical trial classic a classical phase 1 clinical trial we have got a detailed video on clinical trial the link will be given in the description box please check it out after this video now whatever we have learnt in t1 now it will be applied to the next phase or the phase of t2 in which for the first time there will be the patients and this t2 is the phase 2 and phase 3 of a classical clinical trial so this knowledge after the uh, phase 3 of a clinical trial the new drug after successful completion of the phase 3 of a clinical trial a new drug is introduced into the market so now whatever we have done in control studies here that will now be put into practice and the phase 4 clinical trial will start once it is put into practice then we can give the care or the recommended and timely care to the right patient and the final translation from t3 the final translation to t4 will be at a community level now we are not talking about the individual patients we are talking about the community level there will be population level outcome research so now the entire population will be benefited whosoever needs the drugs and that will give us the true benefit so as you can see from each and every phase there is a flow or a application of the information from the previous phase on to the next phase and also see that in the in all the phases there is a bidirectional arrow the second arrow also stands for we are going to keep taking feedbacks so this is how a translational research usually proceeds so the question that arises is that why do we need the concept of translational medicine or translational research now one thing is that the classical clinical trials they take a long time whereas translational medicine being a more focused approach it shortens the duration of the clinical trials next and one other most important reason is that it bridges the gap between what we know and what we practice that is a theory and the practical the gap between that is lessened another thing is that whatever we are doing in the laboratories that laboratory research is incorporated into the clinical medicine and next is that it increases the since it's a more focused approach it increases the cost effectivity of healthcare delivery now students we also have a detailed lecture on pharmacoeconomics where the concept of cost effectivity has been discussed that link is also given in a description box please do take out that video after this now what are the objectives of translational pharmacology so translational pharmacology it wants to discover the origin pathway and pathophysiology of a disease along with the biomarkers now if we remember what we have discussed earlier that is the components of the translational pharmacology in the components of the translational pharmacology we have also talked about the population needs so suppose if a disease is prevalent within the population then we also want to understand what is the origin of the disease what is the pathway through which the disease is spreading what is the pathophysiology or how the disease is spreading and how can we investigate the spread of the disease so we have to take care of the population needs as well hence one of the objectives is obviously to take care of it the second thing is once we have taken care of the first point 
the next thing is to discover and develop some new diagnostic and therapeutic measures so that we can counteract the disease and our next objective is since we are now going on a much more focused approach it is to discover new drugs in a shorter duration of time now a translational pharmacology research will have five major steps the first will be the basic research which will have the drug discovery the designing of the molecule and studying of the physiochemical properties so once we have done that after that we will move on to the preclinical trials which is going to happen in the animals there will be study of the pharmacokinetic dynamics and the toxicology and safety concerns so the next step is to establish a relation between the finding of what of the preclinical trials that is whatever we did in the animals their relation is established in the early clinical trials or where the healthy volunteers are taking part now whatever we have learned from these early clinical trials they are now applied into the later part of the clinical trials and that data of the the data that we have got from the early clinical trials they are now evaluated in the later clinical trials in terms of dose safety and efficacy and ultimately there will be a formulation of the guidelines on how to use the drugs in clinical practice so once these guidelines are in place next step will be to apply these guidelines and to treat the disease by with the help of the research that we have done earlier and to minimize the adverse effects of the drugs but translational pharmacology also have a few limitations first thing is that there is ethical issues and regulatory concerns next another important thing is that there will be the uh, current financial support that we have for the translational pharmacology that is inadequate another very important limitation is that there is shortage of trained investigators we don't have too many trained investigators who are much more well versed in the field of this translational pharmacology and since we need a large number of databases for the uh, to store the records of the translational pharmacology currently there is poor infrastructure and incompatibility of the databases that's it for today guys if you like the video then give it a thumbs up and share it also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any more upcoming videos also do let us know down in the comment below what other topic you would like us to discuss until next time take care and goodbye